This film is presented as part of Convair Report ZC2061, Hydrodynamics Demonstration Report XF2Y1, Single Ski Airplane. The tests you will see were conducted both in sheltered and open waters, and no attempt has been made to eliminate unfavorable scenes. Comments made here were lifted in part from actual flight test operation reports compiled by the Experimental Flight Test Department at Convair San Diego. The first series of tests was conducted in San Diego Bay. All tests were conducted between October 1955 and January 1956. To better demonstrate spray characteristics at low speeds, this particular operation was filmed at 64 pictures per second. Speed of the sea dart is approximately 15 knots, and directional control is maintained using water rudder, aileron, and asymmetric power. Banking the airplane with aileron and water rudder is the easiest and most natural way to maneuver. The procedure is similar to speedboat maneuvering. On this 180 degree turn into a crosswind, water can be seen entering the inlet ducts. Extended taxiing at this speed range in crosswind conditions causes a salt buildup in the compressor section, which produces a decay in thrust. A fresh water injection system was developed and is now on the airplane. This new system successfully purges the compressor section of the salt deposits, correcting the thrust decay problem. Higher speed directional control is demonstrated by these S turns. Pilots report that the technique of banking for turning is comfortable, easily learned, and practical at any water speed. Dragging the inboard wingtip in the water has no adverse effects. Here, salt water is drawn into the afterburner secondary ejector system and expelled through the primary ejector during the ski emergence period. This produces a rapid quenching of hot afterburner nozzle leaves causing considerable warpage and shortening the life of the nozzle leaves. The secondary ejector extensions have decreased water ingestion in this area, but the problem still exists. On this series of runs, fixed elevator positions from 15 degrees down to 10 degrees up were used. This run was made with a 5 degree down elevator into the wind. Takeoff time following afterburner light off was 28 seconds. This run, 10 degrees down elevator out of the wind. Takeoff time, 27 seconds. 15 degrees down elevator into the wind. Takeoff time, 24 seconds. Zero degree elevator. Mild longitudinal oscillation was encountered at this elevator setting. Takeoff time, 26 seconds. All runs were made for fixed stick longitudinal stability evaluation. This run was made with a five degree up elevator setting. The final run was made with a 10 degree up elevator setting with a takeoff time of 31 seconds. The operational significance of the trim limits of stability established by these fixed stick tests is shown by the next two runs. Here, the pilot is using a stick not fixed technique, but holding trim attitude in the fixed stick unstable region. Takeoff times were 25.5 and 28 seconds, with takeoff distances of approximately 2,300 feet. A total of 21 takeoffs of this type were made without difficulty. These two takeoffs and landings were made with a 90 degree 16 knot crosswind. The wing low crosswind correction method was used to hold the desired heading. Takeoff time from afterburner firing to liftoff was approximately 27 seconds. These landing characteristics tests were conducted in 10 to 12 inch wind waves with confused boat wakes. Optimum pilot technique was used during the takeoff runs 
holding low trim angles to facilitate acceleration to liftoff. The first landing was made out of the wind with a touchdown trim of 20 degrees. The second landing was made into the wind with a 13 degree touchdown trim. The characteristic nose down trimming at touchdown eliminates skipping frequently associated with seaplanes. High rate of sink landings were conducted for landing load evaluation. Here, phototheodolite cameras recorded a 17.8 foot per second rate of sink. Maximum oleo load was 48,200 pounds. This landing was made at 14.7 feet per second sink with maximum oleo load of 42,200 pounds. The sea dart is designed for a maximum oleo load of 88,000 pounds. Following the sheltered water tests, operations were moved to the open sea four miles off the Southern California coast. This first operation was conducted in a sea state three with primary swells of two and one half feet running at 80 foot intervals. Wind waves were approximately eight inches and the wind velocity was eight knots. Primary purpose of the open sea operations was to determine the suitability for the sea dart to operate in unsheltered water. The landing was made parallel to the major swell pattern and approximately 90 degrees to surface winds. Touchdown speed was 115 knots indicated airspeed. Landing and runout were routine. At speeds below ski emergence, bow spray is deflected down and out by the bow spray rails. When the ski emerges, the leading edge of the ski breaks the water surface with little disturbance, and as the speed is increased, the general spray pattern moves aft. During the taxi back to a reciprocal heading for takeoff, no spray problems were encountered. For the takeoff, a technique was developed for optimum spray control. This involved heading the sea dart directly into the wind for ski emergence, firing the afterburners, and then making a sharp 90 degree turn to the desired takeoff heading. Liftoff was made in 26 seconds from afterburner light off. Following the takeoff, a normal 360 degree pattern was made for a touch and go run. Landing loads were similar in magnitude to those encountered in calm water at a sink speed of 11 to 13 feet per second. Afterburners were fired at approximately 80 knots indicated airspeed during the landing runout. Operation in this open sea condition was considered routine. The second open sea operation was conducted in a sea state five. Primary swells of six feet were running at 70 to 100 foot intervals. Secondary swells of two feet were imposed upon the major pattern and every seventh swell was between eight and 10 feet in height. One 12 foot swell was observed immediately before landing. The landing was made parallel to the major swell in approximately 90 degrees to the surface winds. The water conditions were very severe and far beyond that anticipated in the operational concepts of the design. This entire operation was filmed at 64 pictures per second, which slows down the action of the sea and gives an impression of calmness where such a condition does not exist. Although an operation in such heavy seas is not one that a pilot would care to endure as a daily task, the operation was considered successful and should influence future design considerations. The sea dart was trimmed high on the runout and although some pitch oscillations occurred which were uncomfortable to the pilot, the structural integrity of the airplane was not impaired. A taxi back to the point of touchdown was made at approximately 30 knots, 90 degrees to the wind and parallel to the swell. Taxing in crosswind conditions at speeds of 10 to 30 knots, upwind spray from the forward section of the ski is blown inward and is occasionally drawn into the engine inlet. The amount of water ingested during a crosswind takeoff, even in rough water, does not constitute a serious problem. However, extended crosswind taxiing in this speed range will result in loss of thrust and engine reliability. At this speed, with the ski emerged, 
Spray characteristics and stability were excellent in spite of the heavy sea. On the takeoff, parallel to the running sea, excessive up elevators were held, which retarded longitudinal acceleration. This caused a series of premature liftoffs, and heavy impact loads were experienced in the skipping that followed. Structural integrity, in spite of the severe pounding, was not impaired. Final separation from the water was made 40 seconds following the afterburner light off. Although the pilot reported the landing was within the operating limits of the airplane, the takeoff run probably approached the limit takeoff capabilities of the airplane for the existing thrust to weight ratio. The final landing of the United States Navy's experimental sea dart on the waters of San Diego Bay was made without incident. The landing concluded hydrodynamic testing of the XF-2Y1 single ski airplane. Items considered were hydrodynamic resistance, longitudinal stability and control, lateral directional stability and control, landing stability and control, rough water, taxi and spray characteristics, dynamic and rigid body water loads, and engine and equipment operation. Regarding the ski arrangement, the results obtained from the testing and analysis of the data compiled during the testing indicates not a deviation from, but rather a strengthening of, the ski oleo concept. In concluding a five-year program centered on a revolutionary design for water-based aircraft, the Sea Dart has brought aeronautical science to the threshold of a new era of flight. An era of water-based aircraft, free of complicated shore handling devices and excessive aerodynamic drag. The Sea Dart ably demonstrates the design possibilities for water-based aircraft with aerodynamic performance equivalent to land-based counterparts. Yeah.